bought a filing cabinet with the source code for the Atari VCS and 84 of their games. Had they been slightly less dishonorable, they could have made it very embarrassing for Atari. But they didn't. They decided to try and send it back over to them. So you have filing cabinets with legal documents, with other assorted stuff like that. People don't know who the hell owns what. So technically, of these 8-bit computers, the lowly Sinclair ZX80 is the only one that has ROMs available. <coughs> it's only because they made them available via the GPL. So, um, I won't go into a whole lot of the details of it, but apparently because Nine Tiles was the uh, company that created the ZX80, they produced the ROMs, so they made the source code available under the open OS, um, sorry, the open 80 and 81 projects. Uh, one of the emulators now ships with those ROMs in there. And I have <coughs> my box of tricks, the Timex Sinclair. Anyone remember this little sucker? Yeah. yeah. I had one. Yeah, I had one? Excellent computer. Not a whole lot going on inside the covers, but a really good computer. This is the Sinclair 1500, which was uh, the 16K version of this. Uh, the Spectrum basically is this case. Uh, unfortunately, the Spectrum really never made it over here in the United States. Timex licensed it to as the, um, the 2068, and yeah. then they later on, um, it was highly incompatible with the Spectrum at the time, unfortunately, so it didn't really catch on over here. And then the 2048 uh, made it, I think it was released in Portugal or something like that. I mean, these things are worldwide. It's also one of the most cloned computers out there. Uh, both the Spectrum and the, the, uh, the Timex up because they are very simple. They use a lot of off-the-shelf parts, not a whole lot of custom hardware. Uh, anyhow, Amstrad uh, was one of the companies that was uh, bought out, I'm sorry, they bought out um, Sinclair Research and made the ROMs available to the emulator community. What that means is that there are a shit ton of really excellent Spectrum emulators out there, including some for the Android. And because that they did that, um, you can actually legally download on your tablet, on your computer, a uh, Sinclair Spectrum emulator and not have to worry about someone trying to knock down your door. The other computer, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Jupiter Ace, uh, has ROMs that are available. This is a computer that was built in forth. It, uh, has lineage to the Sinclair Spectrum in that a couple of the people who worked on the Sinclair Spectrum uh, released this computer. There's about 8,000 of them out there, so if you find them, good, good for you. Um, there was another version of it that was released. Um, I think it was like 800 or something like that. It's like an order of magnitude or several orders of magnitude less release. Commodore Amiga. <laughs> It's a sticky little situation. There's a company called Cloanto, based out of Italy, which has uh, says that they had the, like, the copyrights. They bought the copyrights for the, from Commodore or Amiga for the Commodore or Amiga, and they sell a package called Amiga Forever. This is the disc version of it. There's also downloadable versions of it as well. Um, they're about the only legal way, and it seems that everyone else seems to agree that they're the ones who own it. As far as the Commodore 64, they also sell a version uh, called C64 Forever. Um, yeah, those are Commodore machines. They have a version called C64 Forever, uh, which they sell, which <coughs> they, they have, I, I'm gonna go with that they have a legal claim to sell it. I'm not entirely sure if that's 100% true, but we'll go with it for now. So anywho, um, this, this was, um, includes Several different DVDs. There's uh, three DVDs of stuff. So you have the um, the Kickstart ROMs and several games on one disc, and you have videos on the other discs. You don't have to get the physical media. You can get a download version. It's just Windows only at that point. So buy everywhere. The Atari ST uh, does not have any ROMs that are available. However, there's an emulator. Uh, version of the Tremiel operating system, or the operating system, depending on how you want to call it, uh, called Emutos, 
And what that will do, that's a GPL version of the operating system for Atari ST machines that allow you to boot it up and, and work with it. So we'll be using that instead of the actual Atari ROMs. On the Atari 8-bit side, there isn't a legal ROM, unfortunately, available in the sense that there is one ROM that was shipped with PC Xformer uh, that people are using um, to say that it, that was the license for it. Where the license for the Atari ROMs are, I don't know, unfortunately. I wish I knew better. And I wish that Atari or whomever owns them nowadays would do something similar to what Amiga Forever does and just release the ROMs available for emulation. But what can you do? Main, the multi-arcade something something emulator, <laughs> machine emulator. Uh, the, the fun part about arcade machines is that there's literally thousands of arcade machines and these are the only folks that manage to actually get arcade machine ROMs available <coughs> for people to download. The problem is that because Nostalgia is lucrative. They'd rather sell them via their own emulator discs, um, or they'd rather control the rights to them because they're not sure exactly what they have, but they want to make sure that you don't have it. Um, XD has released about 20 games, um, and we'll show some of those. Uh, there's some from video games, GMBH, uh, Looping, and Super Tank. There's one that a uh, gentleman released that um, never really made it past prototype stage, but he still retained the copyright on called Robbie Roto, which is probably that and Gridley are the most famous main things because they're the ones that you could initially, there were the only two that you could really uh, bring along. And then Alien Arena, which I to this day cannot figure out how to play. It's, uh, it's an interesting game. So the gist of it, if you want to do legal emulation, do your research much as you possibly can online uh, or find other folks that can do the research for you. That's that. There's another problem and this is a bigger problem. I don't remember if you all remember the 1980s the way that I do but if you remember the 1980s that I do you'll remember that don't copy that floppy 1990s uh, slogan. A lot of these things have copy protection on them. The problem with emulation is that emulation emulates enough of the hardware to really get it to work, but may not necessarily emulate enough of the hardware to do all of the tricky things that a floppy disk, a physical floppy disk can do. So some of these programs might not work. Uh, even if you get the original, even if you get the original hardware, there may be certain things that aren't going to show up the proper way. And there's a lot of tricky stuff. Um, it's not this game, but um, see, I, I have a copy of Balance of Power and by Chris Crawford, and I'm not sure I could necessarily play this on current hardware. I'd have to find something <coughs> that is unfortunately cracked. The problem with that is when you find the cracked versions, you also find lovely things like this, where you get to see. BBSs and other assorted crap from the 1980s and 1990s from long defunct groups that had managed to graffiti these games so that they could make them available to other folks. This is unfortunately extremely common and is probably the only way that any of these games are going to be remembered is the cracked versions. So my advice to co uh, companies, if they can re-release these stuff without uh, having all of this crack stuff on there, that would be great. If you're going to release anything and have any any hope of any kind of preservation and not have to worry about some group putting their stuff on your stuff, don't put copy protection on there. <coughs> That's not on there. Okay, let's show some games. So these are the emulators that we're going to cover in some small detail. I'm going to make the caveat, unfortunately. This is my childhood. Um, I don't share the memories that you have of some of these machines, so some of these machines are going to get a little shorter shrift than others. Unfortunately, I apologize. Uh, one of those machines is the Commodore 64. I never owned a Commodore 64. I owned the Atari. Oh, you owned the Commodore 64. Wow. I didn't own it back then. So it's going to get a little shorter shrift. So I, I apologize if I don't show your machine 
and a great leg, or if I don't show all the things that your machine can do, I apologize for that in advance. Um, secondly, well, there's no secondly. Um, let's get on with this. So we'll start off, well, actually, do we want to start with that? Start with the Commodore Pet. One thing that I, I, the reason that I have some nostalgia with this particular machine is that at our school we had Commodore Pets, and I actually had one of those Commodore Pets. I didn't bring it with me. One of the funny things. This is, I think, the only time that Bill Gates ever got outsmarted in business. Uh, was going up against Jack Tramiel. Jack Tramiel managed to get Microsoft Basic, and he managed to get Microsoft Basic for a site license in perpetuity. The Commodore Pet managed to sell, I think, about a million machines, and the Commodore 64 is one of the best-selling computers of all time. So, and Microsoft only got a small amount of that particular money back when they thought that Basic wasn't really going to go anywhere. There is an Easter egg, and this is about all I'm going to show on this. Microsoft was a tad pissed about this, that all their branding was being removed. And so they added a little Easter egg where it shows Microsoft on the loading screen. That was kind of cute. <laughs> so one of the uh, computers that I was really, really wanted, I mean, to the point of actually drawing chicken, chicken lips, uh, logos all over stuff was the VIC-20. I don't know if you remember the VIC-20 at all. Yes. That is the VIC-20 via the Vice emulator. I think it would be great for people who have very bad eyesight. <laughs> um, yeah. I like the Vice 3 if I was sitting in the back. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what Hello World would look like on a VIC-20. But the one that I think a lot of you, and uh, most people out there, would be really thrilled with is the uh, 